Welcome to worship at Village Church. We are glad that you are here. We hope that this time is meaningful for you, and we trust it is pleasing to God when we offer our worship to the living God. We also hope that you'll pass the peace with your friends, uh, send a text or email. Uh, in this way, we remind ourselves that even if we might be by ourselves, we're not alone. So we're glad that you're here to participate in this time of worship. And happy Father's Day to you today as well. Hey, a number of things to share with you about ministry this week. Uh, um, you can check our website as information about uh, growing through grief. Uh, conversations are starting on Wednesday of this week. We are beginning uh, at our Antioch campus a, a Vesper service uh, reflection time that will be on site. You need to register for that, but information for, about that is on our website. And then at 6.30, both here at our Mission Campus and at our Antioch Campus, uh, there will be conversations about the biblical text that we consider in the sermon. It's been our summer pattern to do that. And so Reverend Brandon Frick will be leading that at VOA, and Roger Nishioka will be leading that here at our Mission Campus. And so you can register to join in that conversation as well. Uh, this Friday, we will have our drive through ice cream social. Now, registration needed for that. Just come and enjoy uh, drive-by and get greeting and something sweet uh, for you and your family. Again, details about all of these ministries uh, are on our website. We hope you'll check that out. But for now, let us be called to worship. Welcome to this time of worship. With candles, we set this time as sacred and we mark it as set apart. With light, we remember that God is always present with us. It is we who need to prepare ourselves to be present to God. And so as we begin this time of worship, I invite you to pause for a moment and breathe with me. Take a deep breath in. and let it out. Keep breathing in and out. And as you do, allow yourself to connect with that breath, to focus on your breath, and to connect with a God who dwells right there within you. See if you can let go of any worries or distractions just for this time of worship and see if you can center yourself to focus on worshiping God and this time with each other. Friends, let us worship God.
Good morning, kids. Come a little closer. Remember, this is a time just for you guys. How are you guys this morning? Man, I sure miss seeing you guys in person, but I'm so glad we get this opportunity on Sunday mornings. Do you guys know what we're celebrating today? That's right. It's Father's Day. My dad is pretty amazing, and I bet your dad is too. So let's take a minute and turn to our dads and say, Happy Father's Day. Go ahead and do it. Good job. Hey, also, set aside some time today to call or, or send a card or greet somehow the other people in your lives that are dads. It could be uncles, could be grandpas, it could be your neighbor's dads, it could be coaches that you're close to. Um, take a minute and tell those guys Happy Father's Day as well. I know they would appreciate it. Well, I want you to think back over the past several days and think about the role your dad plays in your life. What has he done the last few days that has been really helpful to you? Maybe he's tucked you into bed. Maybe he's cooked dinner. Maybe he's driven you places. Think about that for a minute. And I want you to turn to your dad and say, thank you, dad, for, and then you fill in the blank, whatever you guys have been up to lately. Go ahead and do it. All right, you, can, you have my full permission to continue that conversation today, and I know your dad would appreciate it. Well, I asked a few of our friends at Village to tell us a little bit about their dads. Let's hear what they have to say. My favorite thing to do with my dad is play games with him. Hi, so the favorite thing I like to do with my dad is to play sports my with him. My favorite thing is to hit balls with dad and play soccer. My favorite thing to do with my dad is hit baseball. One thing I like about my dad is that he is really outgoing. I like that my dad plays baseball with me. I like that my dad is my baseball coach. And I love that he supports us in everything we do. Awesome, guys. Thank you for sharing. Hey, let's say a little repeat after me prayer together. And then we'll keep rolling this morning. Here we go. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for our dads and grandpas and uncles. We are so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, I hope you have an awesome Sunday celebrating the dads in your life. See you soon. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Loving God, we come before you this day with simple prayers from our hearts. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who work to bring healing. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who live in fear. We pray for those who struggle financially or who long for work or food or clean water or shelter. We pray for those struggling with addiction or imprisonment and who long for freedom in body, mind, or soul. We pray for those who are close to death this day. We pray for those who grieve and mourn. We pray for all those we love 
and all those who we could love more. We pray, O God, for ourselves. We ask for your patience, your wisdom, your courage, and your guidance. Help us to lean on you, O God, that you might lead us in your way of peace and light and love everlasting. We pray all these things in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So our scripture reading today comes from the book of Exodus. I'll begin reading with the last verse of chapter 31, uh, verse 18, and we'll read the first six verses of chapter 32. As we come to this text, let us first join together in prayer. Gracious God, because you are God, it is your word and your word alone that is life for us. And because you are gracious, we trust that you will meet us in these moments and speak to us. We are here, O oh God. We are listening. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us listen now for God's word for us. When God finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of the calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings, and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to revel. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. So the Bible has some great stories, and the Bible has some weird stories. Uh, some are weird because they were written thousands of years ago in a different time and different culture and different language. And some are weird just because I think they're weird. And this story falls in the latter category. Moses, that great leader of God's people, is up the mountain with God. Moses is actually receiving the Ten Commandments, so it's a pretty important meeting. But down at the foot of the mountain the people are getting antsy. They're wondering, what's taking so long? Moses is delayed. When is he going to return? Maybe he has forgotten us. And so Aaron, Moses' brother, he develops a plan. He says, bring me all your gold earrings, and I'll make it into a golden calf, and we can say that is our God, and we can worship the golden calf. We can create our own creator. If God is not saving us the way we want, we can save ourselves. We'll make a golden calf and worship it as God. And the people said, that's a great idea. Now, 
of all the questions that life raises for us, particularly pertaining to our faith, I have absolutely no concern that you are going to start worshiping something you fashion from your jewelry. That's just weird. And yet, in the Bible's own weird way, I think this story actually names something that is pretty contemporary for us. For if I understand the text, the question it's really asking is, can the word and way of God be trusted or not? You see, things get off the rail a bit when Moses is delayed. You know, God never acts quickly. You've probably noticed. It's about a billion years ago. It was about a billion years ago, a pretty remarkable transformation happened in life on earth. A billion years ago, all life on earth was single-cell organisms, but then it began to evolve into multicellular organisms, algaes and worm-like creatures, and then larger and larger. This time of transformation is called the Cambrian explosion explosion because it happens so rapidly. Now, if by rapid you think, I mean, it happened over a weekend or so. No, no. This transformation took 10 to 20 million years, a time span that Arthur Matt Ridley describes as the mere blink of a geological eye. Well, I don't know how to speak of 20 million years as a blink of an eye, geological or otherwise. But one of the things it reveals is God is remarkably patient. If God can wait for 20 million years for single cell to evolve in the multicellular life, well, maybe that explains the sometimes unending patience God has with us. But you see, we talk about living toward that promised day, but it feels a long way off sometimes. And we wonder, what's up with us that we're not closer? And maybe we wonder, what's up with God? That's what they were asking at the foot of that mountain. Maybe they were singing the 13th Psalm, how long, O Lord? When Moses failed to return, they decided, you know, maybe God's not going to come through. The will and word of God, it just can't be trusted. I don't know that I've ever seen times like they are now. The racial tension that has emerged, the, the fatigue and the anger sprinkled with a bit of hope. It's, it's nationwide. It's, it's, it's global. And that that exhaustion, it is sprinkled with a bit of hope as we can't help but want, when we get on the other side of this, can we be different with each other? Can we take the steps that are ours to take that we might be different with one another? We see little signs here and there. NASCAR has banned Confederate flags. I don't know why we need a secessionist flag, but it's NASCAR. And, and, and the NFL, after seeing the police officer kneel on Mr. Floyd's neck, says they now finally understand why Colin Kaepernick was kneeling. And maybe most significantly, more and more voices of law enforcement are saying that the culture of public safety needs to change. And, and these small steps in the right direction are what sprinkle the exhaustion of people of color with just a bit of hope and us with a bit of hope that maybe this will lead to change in how we are with one another. And before that, before that, just a few weeks ago, Every night, the news was dominated by one story, coronavirus, and it's still there. There are over a 
118,000 deaths in the U.S. alone. And social distancing is breaking down as some people are, are driven to the streets by conviction and some are finding bars and restaurants and party scenes out of boredom. And some, as we said a few weeks ago, are listening to news channels that say, you don't have to trust the scientists. You're your own expert. It's a media hype. Our faith teaches us that it is holy to sacrifice for the common good. Our faith teaches us that it's not enough for me to be well, but my neighbor needs to be well, or I'm not completely who I am called to be. But to sacrifice for the common good is looked upon with suspicion these days. It's days like these. We have to decide, do we think that the word and will of God can be trusted. For these are waiting days. We, we talk about that promised day, but we're not that close yet. And, and we kind of wonder why we aren't closer. What is it about us? And, and what about God? Can we trust the Word and way of God these days? You know, maybe our greatest threat is that which is happening to the climate. Our way of sustaining our lives is on an unsustainable path. Uh, NASA reports in conjunction with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that over 800,000 years ago until, well, about the time I was born, over 800,000 years ago until just this generation, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that heat capturing gas, never exceeded 300 parts per million. But about the time I was born, it started skyrocketing up. And over my lifetime, it has never been below 300 parts per million and is over 400 parts per million right now. The way we are sustaining our lives is on an unsustainable path, and our choices have consequences, and we'll all pay it, but we won't pay it equally. It will fall harshest on the impoverished. Our storms are stronger and more frequent. Hurricanes erase towns from the land. Dams break and floodwaters wash villages away. Ice caps melting, seas rising, species going extinct choices have consequences. And our faith, our faith teaches us that the whole of creation belongs to God. We are not owners of the land. We are stewards of what belongs to God. And these are days when we have to decide if that word and way of God can be trusted or not. You see, we, we say we're living toward God's promised day, a day when justice rolls down like waters, a, a, a day when we treat our neighbors the way we want to be treated, a day when swords are beaten into plowshares because it just makes more sense to feed one another than it does to kill each other, a day when all of God's children Absolutely all of God's children are treated as God's children. And that day can feel like it's a long way off. And we're waiting. We're waiting. And in the waiting time, we have to decide, can we trust in that day or not? And then it, it seems like sometimes God gives us a glimpse one of the protests that I have participated in is the one that happened right here in our neighborhood of our village on Mission Campus. There were lots of people that showed up, maybe a thousand people that showed up with signs and chants and some singing and speeches. The, the organizers, they asked a man named Joseph to run the public address system. And Joseph is an African American. And he did a Facebook Live post about it. Our 
site pastor at Antioch, Brandon Frick, he, he emailed that post to several of us. Joseph said that he's never at ease in Prairie Village. As a black man, when he drives through our neighborhoods, he prays because he's anxious. But then he saw probably a thousand people with Black Lives Matter signs saying that he matters, that his community matters. And Joseph's own interpretation of this moment was he said, God is doing something. This is different. God is doing something, he said, even in Prairie Village. I think he's right. I hope he's right. Because like you, I want us to be different with one another. I know you do too. And our faith teaches us that love is less about something we feel and more about the intentional choices we make for the good of our community, for the good of the neighbor. You know, there are some who would deem such a sacrificial love to be foolish. It'll never work in this world. That's why it's important for you and me to show that we trust the word and way of God. We won't all do it in the same way because our calling is not all identical in that fashion, but we'll all do it in the way that God calls us. In these waiting days, when we are living toward that promised day, it is faithful and right and pleasing to God that we show we trust in the word in the way of God, even in these days. Pray with me. Gracious God, we believe. Help our unbelief. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
There's that old saying that the only thing constant is change. And of course, change is all around us, all the time in different ways. For those who are looking for change and may be crying like the psalmist cries, how long, O Lord, change can't come quickly enough. And for others in the midst of tragedy or turmoil, It seems that change can be too rapid and it can be impossible to keep up. I invite you this week to consider the changes in our world. It can be hard to trust what is happening around us, what we hear in the media. It can be hard to trust each other. It can be hard even to trust ourselves. But the one thing we can trust is our God, our God whose love is constant and faithful and everlasting. So in the midst of the change, I invite you to pay attention to it, but I invite you more importantly to look for God's love, that love that is constant and faithful and everlasting. Where does that show up for you this week? Where does it surprise you? Where does it comfort you? Where does it bring you hope? Amen.
charge you to remember who you are. You are God's child. And there is no power in heaven or earth that can pull you from God's love. Let that love live through you this day and every day as we live toward God's promised day. That day when swords are beaten into plowshares. That day when justice does roll down like water. That day when our children grow up to be neither the destroyers nor the destroyed. That day when all of God's children are treated as God's children. Let us live toward that day. And now, may the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of God's Spirit rest and abide with us all now and forever. Amen.